Hello, hello again. Welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of Carving the Divine TV. My name is Yujiro Seki. I'm a director, writer, and the producer of the documentary Carving the Divine. Carving the Divine is about the Buddhist sculptors of Japan, and I'm ready to present it for the first time in the world. But before I do so, I thought it would be a great idea to introduce basic concept of Buddhism and the history of Buddhism so that when you guys finally watch my documentary, you guys can watch it at the maximum value. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our special guest. Again, he's back. He's back to talk to us about the ancient wisdom, Buddhist philosophical tradition, and the world philosophy. So I'm very excited to have you, Professor Peter Bolen. Welcome, welcome, Professor. So it's so it's so great to be here always, and I especially caught by today's topic. It's really the center of Buddhism in 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 every way. And without a kind of a deep grasp of this subject, the rest of Buddhism can't come into focus. So I'm really excited about what we're about to do. Great, great. Yes, uh, we talked about this uh, uh, concept uh, with Michael uh, a little while ago, and uh, we want to expand upon it. So we understood uh, uh, Nirvana or enlightenment is not really a state of uh, mind that uh, you, you're going to go to like a heaven and uh, you, you become like a heroin addict and, and all this, you know. It's not like that. It's like a blowing off the, uh, you know, desire so that you can be free. But, you know, we don't really know what this means exactly. It sounds pretty good, isn't it? But, you know, I was wondering, as a philosophy pro professor, you can make it a little bit easier for us to understand what this blowing, like a candle of desire means, you know? Uh, yeah. yeah, tell us, tell us all about it. Well, nirvana from the Sanskrit, uh, near, N-I-R, meaning um, no, it's a, it's a negating prefix. And vana means uh, wind that is moving, like air or breath. So nirvana literally means no wind, which is to suggest, as you just said, the absence of agitation. So a kind of stillness, right? And, and so it is, the, it is not a future state or some sort of heavenly reward. It will, it, the word nirvana will be, get used that way in later devotional Buddhism. But in original Buddhism, I think Buddha meant nirvana to be a, a liberated consciousness. And what do I mean by that? Well, normal unenlightened consciousness is typically caught by two things, craving and fear. There's all kinds of stuff that I want. You know, I'm always hungry and I'm driven by my nature to, to crave and want money and love and attention and and new clothes and all that stuff. And then I also have all these fears. That's the other thing that, that is occupying my mind all the time. Stuff I don't want. So desires and aversions, things I'm trying to keep away from me. And that's a highly agitated state. That's what we all go around doing, trying to get the things we want, trying to keep the things we don't want away. So nirvana would, would be to just sort of ask yourself, what would it feel like? If both of those lists, all the things I want and all the things I fear, what if both of those lists just vanished? And suddenly there's nothing that I want. I, I shift into gratitude and there's nothing that I fear. I, 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 I welcome whatever happens. And that is freedom and that is stillness. So that's, one way of sort of describing what the Buddhist teaching of nirvana or enlightenment would be to awaken from that sort of nightmarish trap of normal consciousness of craving and fear and just letting all of that go and realizing you're okay, you have enough, this is good, what's happening next, and a sort of a curious, compassionate way of living one's life without attachment to ego demands that things be the way that I say they should be. Interesting, but you know, it, uh, you people certainly can't understand the concept, but you know, how can we live that? Ah, that's another question, right? Yeah. 
Well, I, I think you experience it from time to time, checking with your own experience. We all have moments in our life where we feel okay, where we don't feel afraid, where we realize we have enough. And there's a kind of a glow about that. There's a kind of a stillness. Time sort of stops. You, you, you feel like you're stepping into eternity. I think we get glimpses of it from time to time. But then the busy mind rushes back in with all of the problems and fears. That's why meditation is such a beautiful core part of most Buddhist practice. It's how the Buddha awakened. He didn't do it through devotional prayer or, or intellectual study. He did it through meditation. And that, that enabled him to kind of get quiet enough where these insights arose of their own accord. Wow. You always like summarize it so beautifully. So I'm a speechless. I have nothing more to say, but I'm sure you have more to say. So yeah, uh, I w we want to follow you. Uh, please tell us how to follow you. Oh, sure. It's easy. You know, I'm on Twitter, of course, and I'm on Facebook and Instagram. The most direct route is right to my website, peterboland.com, and join my mailing list, and you can, you can read my uh, columns. I write columns for a couple of magazines. And on my calendar page on the website, if you're in the Southern California area, you can come see me doing all kinds of stuff. It's all right there. So I hope to see some of you somewhere somehow and i have a youtube channel of course just like everybody else just like this guy and uh, that's how we uh, that's one of the tools we use to get it out there beautiful beautiful yes uh, yes your, your wisdom need to be shared by everybody around the world i strongly believe that so yes uh, if you think this information is useful make sure to subscribe my youtube channel follow me on twitter and instagram and like me on my facebook because that's how we do it in the 21st century. And Mr. Peter Boland and I are always doing that together. <laughs> that's right. Amen, brother. Amen. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Talk to you soon.